Hi, I'm Tronster, a digital artist, composer, a game designer and programmer and adjunct teacher. And tonight I want to talk to you about video games and how they're a medium in creativity. You know, ever since I can remember, I have loved video games. Even from the early 80s when I got my first video game system, an Atari 2600. I would play that thing whenever I was allowed to be on the TV. And it was my favorite activity to do next to going to an arcade. I mean, that's where the real games were at. And I could go to Rivertown over in Parkville, which is like a Chuck E. Cheese, or, uh, you know, a bowling alley or Skateland, because, I mean, arcades were everywhere back in the early 80s. And I didn't really notice that arcade games were starting to diminish around me, because I would just buy new console games and keep playing video games. I was oblivious to all the people who said, video games are a fad. But they were right. In 1985, Video games had a huge crash, at least in the United States. A $3 billion industry got reduced to only $100 million by 1985. But an amazing thing happened. It boomed back up to over $105 billion today, worldwide. There's something about video games that transcend the fad. There is something deeper about them. And I was wondering, what is it about video games that draw us to them? What is it about video games that has us still putting out money for them, that has us playing them? And I look back at the start of civilization, at the human condition, I noticed we enjoy a good story. The Greeks, they would tell stories of gods and goddesses creating a lot of havoc for humans. You know, these stories would continue into the Dark Ages where you'd have stories of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. And as we learn new technologies, we'd continue to tell these stories, not just orally or written, but through radio waves or through TV. And only about over 100 years ago did we start to go and create movies that we could send out to tell these stories. In the beginning, they were crude. They were simple, quick black and white cuts, and the effects were very cheesy. But by 1940, just 40 years later, we have the Wizards of Oz, which the effects were still a little cheesy, but you know, we had color, and we have up till today, 100 years later, the shows that we see now. And I think just in the adventure genre, like how much games have progressed, and I love this slide right here for two reasons. This image on the lower right-hand corner, besides showing the progression, is important because first, it's today. That image is 40 years from when we started making video games. We are where the movie industry was with The Wizard of Oz. We don't know what the next 60 years are going to be, and that's exciting. The second thing that's exciting is that image came from my iPhone. I mean, we're almost to realistic graphics on a portable device that can connect to anyone in the world. And not only are these worlds that other people have made for us, but we can make these worlds ourselves. There are games out there like Minecraft, and it lets 10-year-olds to create their own castles and worlds and explore. And this one was not made by a 10-year-old, but it was made by myself and a bunch of my friends. <laughs> and what we would do is, once they would put their kids to bed, one week every night, no matter where we were around Baltimore, we could log on and we could go and have community inside of this virtual world and build things in a digital sandbox and play as adults. Video games even outside of the digital world are influencing us. You go to Etsy today, you type in video games, you will see over 13,000 different items. From cufflinks and candles to cupcakes and coffee tables, it's all there. And video games are not just surface level craft items. I mean, people for the most important day of their lives will go and have video game inspired wedding invitations or proposals. Some people even get married in video games. So I look to all parts of society. The Baltimore Symphony Orchestra alone has done various um, uh, concerts where the scores came completely from video games or even a single video game. Ohio State University two weeks ago had their marching band form a bunch of iconic video game characters. It got over 12 million views after the first two weeks. 100,000 people liked it. There were 1,000 haters, but you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, video games the last 40 years have been so important to us, the Smithsonian just finished the Art of Games exhibit, which is now traveling around the world. 
And while the past is important, again, the future is why I'm excited. Because virtual reality is getting better, and motion controls are getting better. There will be a time when we will be able to go to bed and play video games in our dreams with our friends. And I know that sounds crazy, but think how crazy it would be to go to 1971 and tell someone they could play video games with their friends on a device that they can fit in the palm of their hand. Thank you.